I hope you had an amazing new year because the Massachusetts real estate market looks to be jumping right out of the gate. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. And we're also going to do an interest rate update and we'll go over some current events that, well, I think are relevant. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then know I am here to help. The end of December is always slow, with the week between Christmas and New Year's being, well, painfully slow. So it makes sense that not a whole lot has gone on in the market. Less listings, less buyer demand, yeah, real boring stuff here. Well, the market tends to take off right after the New Year, and it looks like this year will be no different. And my belief of the market ramping up quickly on the buyer side, well, it's already starting to be seen and felt. Spring buyers, there is a huge opportunity of getting out in front of the spring market. If I'm reading those tea leaves correctly, then you could save yourself tens of thousands of dollars. Not to mention, if this spring market turns out like the data says, then, well, you're going to need a lot more time in order to find a house. Lots of multiple offer situations. Quick wildcard heads up is always snow. If we end up getting a lot of snow this year, then, well, that's going to end up pushing out the spring market and that surge of activity that we generally see. And there's a quick note. I'm looking to buy houses. So let me know if there are any houses that you are aware of that need a lot of tender, loving care. The uglier, well, then the better. Let's get into it all and jump into the single family market stats. It's been a while since we last talked. And since that time, inventory did exactly what we expected and continued to fall. The fall drawdown is over, and this is generally when we start to see some ups and downs in inventory levels, but ultimately, where it stays, well, rather flat. There are now 2,989 single-family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. Now, that is nearly a 22% decrease in the amount of homes for buyers to look at in just a matter of 28 days. And we should ultimately stay in this plus or minus 3,000 band for the next two months or so. It's generally around the end of February where we start seeing more inventory come on the market and more inventory. We also start seeing more buyer demand come into the market, hence getting involved sooner rather than later. But the first week of 2024 looks to be following the trend of the first week of 2023 with a little spike of inventory. We were only 22 units short of equaling the inventory levels of 2021. But buyers today have 763 more houses to look at when compared to the same time in 2022 and 433 fewer houses to look at when compared to 2023. Now, I have my predictions video coming out in a couple of days, but ultimately, I don't see inventory levels getting any better this year in a decreasing interest rate environment. So buyer beware. Now, new listing activity fell a bit as we headed out of the gate of 2024. There were 534 single-family homes that came on the market this week. Now, this was 74 or 12.2% less units than the same week last year when 608 single-family houses came on the market. That four-week rolling average is 320 units. But that data would include the really slow last two weeks when 220 and 133 new listings came on the market in the entire state of Massachusetts. Under agreements, however, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with 2023. We had 477 homes go under agreement last week, which was 1% or 5 fewer units in the same week last year when 482 single-family houses went under agreement. Now, we have talked about it in, well, past weeks, but I think this continues to show the boost in the market from the interest rates coming down to that 6.5 to 6 three quarters range from the 2023 high of the 8% range. Now, the four-week rolling average is 497 units, and what's interesting is that this takes into account the 306 units from two weeks ago and the 405 units that would have been Christmas week. This is stronger under agreement activity than I would have expected for this time of the year. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were down by 12.2%, while under agreements, they were down by only 1%. We're going to want to keep our eye on that imbalance as we continue the year. There are 380 single-family homes that closed this week for an average sales price of $781,000 and a median sales price of $608,000. And sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by 9.7% as there were 421 single-family homes that sold last week. 
well, this week, last year, for an average price of 637 grand. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in, zero to five months. Well, that's considered a seller's market. Where the closer that you get to zero, the stronger and more aggressive of a seller's market it is. This week, months of inventory ticked up to 1.17 months from last week's 1.13 months. And the 1.17 months this week is compared to the 1.11 months this week last year. Real quick, yeah, it's my shameless plug. You knew it was coming. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, on to the condo market. The fall drawdown, it's done in the condo market as well. But talk about a bounce back in inventory. We're going to get to that a lot more in a couple seconds. We have 1,771 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, this is a 195 unit difference from last week. Currently, there are 19.2% fewer condos on the market today than just 28 days ago. We ended the year with inventory levels pretty much running even with 2022. But as we start off this year, inventory looks to be wanting to play a cat and mouse game with the 2023 levels. We're going to talk about new listings in just a moment because that is the difference maker right now. Now, we have only 21 fewer units on the market today than in 2023. 262 more units on the market than compared to the inventory levels of 2022. In 2021, that was just a bad year for comparison purposes. This COVID really beat the living daylights out of the condo market. It wasn't until about March of 2021 when you really started to see the condo market get its legs back underneath of it and really start taking off again. But when it comes to new listings, the first week of 2024, it's off to a strong start. Like I said, there were 400 condos that came on the market last week with that four-week rolling average of 148 condos. We listed 32 or 8.7% more condos this week than the same week last year when 368 condos came on the market. While new listings came in hot under agreements, well, they fell short of last year's numbers in the condo market this week. We put 219 units under agreement. Now, this 219 units was 96 units or 30.5% shy of last year's numbers when we put 315 condos under agreement. And that four-week rolling average is 207 units. So 8.7% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling at 30.5% fewer condos. There are 143 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $704,000 and a median sales price of $523,000. And this same week last year, there were 264 condos that sold. So sales levels were actually down by 45.8%. Months of inventory had a big move to 1.69 months from last week's 1.49 months. And this is compared to the inventory levels of 2.08 months this week last year. Any chance that you can just do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Just believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference with that YouTube algorithm. It makes a difference to me as well as the channel. And I can't even tell you how much I appreciate it. And by the way, subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So if you haven't, please consider subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates because, well, it's been a while. Rates, yeah, they've been slowly progressing in the wrong direction. They're still down over a third of a point from last month. But they have been slowly but surely kind of creeping up. Now, personally, I'm thinking it's because of the strong economic data and the financial markets. Starting to think a Fed rate cut in March isn't as certain as well they expected and were pricing into the market. It's an unpopular opinion, but falling interest rates are not necessarily good for the housing market, not with supply being so constrained, a second lowest levels in history. If rates fall sharply, then you're going to see some huge spikes in demand as well as pricing. Ultimately, I think this is a good thing for potential buyers. The 10 or 15 offer scenarios with no home inspections and nosebleed prices, well, they're not any fun. I can tell you that from experience. But be sure to check out the video that I released earlier this week that reviews what exactly happened in the 2023 Massachusetts real estate market. Now, I have a lot of great appreciation and depreciation videos coming. Yes, depreciation. Some markets saw it. Plus, my 2024 market predictions video, which I'm going to be releasing next week. But be on the lookout for those videos and let me know if you have any ideas or questions about different market and market stats. And very quickly, I just wanted to turn your attention to a different real estate market. It's the commercial market. Now, residential real estate prices they're not going to go down in 2024. But it's a very different story for commercial real estate. I've said it before, but let's say it again. 
If you're looking for a market crash, then book no further. It's here. It's in the commercial market. Office space vacancy rate in the U.S. has reached its highest level since 1979 with a fourth quarter vacancy rate of 19.6%. Nearly 20% of all office space is not occupied. It's an astounding number. People that are booking for housing market relief by getting more supply on the market, then look no further. City and state governments, well, they're going to need to step in and cut a bunch of red tape and possibly provide some financial incentives. But your answer is staring at you in all the empty space and all the empty buildings that you see in your cityscape. If you're looking to get housing prices, well, more leveled off. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Shot. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next 90 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my contact information. I just can't even tell you how much I appreciate when people do that. And you can also visit YouTubeRealEstateAgent.com and you can find all of my contact information in the description below. Please reach out at your convenience until next time and be on the lookout for those videos.